Hello guys, I have an interesting case for you. It is literally 5.45 p.m. right before I'm leaving for the day and I had an interesting case pop across my desk um, right before closing time. Actually, my husband, who's an emergency veterinarian here, just ran in and said, hey, I have a case I need to ask you about. This is this um, older dog, uh, Husky, that just presented on the emergency service for just not walking well, um, not getting around, not ambulating well, and um, is, the owner also said that the dog is drinking a lot more and urinating a lot more and just not doing well, not eating well. Um, so they ran some blood work, and the first thing he noticed that you can see here on the chemistry is this calcium, holy moly over 16 milligrams per deciliter and the ionized calcium was high too. Um, and so this dog has hypercalcemia. So one major um, thing, you know, we've got lots of different differentials for hypercalcemia, but in an old dog, one of the things we definitely want to think about is neoplasia. So lymphoma and anal sac adenocarcinoma are two major causes of perineoplastic hypercalcemia. So the first two things that he did with this dog was felt the lymph nodes and they felt good. And then he checked the um, anal region and found this here. So this poor dog has a gigantic mass right here um, in its anal region. So you can kind of see where this is going. Um, he went ahead and aspirated that. So here they are aspirating that anal sac mass. And this is when he ran in and said, hey, 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 I need you to look at this cytology real quick before you leave to pick up our little baby, um, which you can make out here in the background of my computer screen. Sorry about that. His little trousers are back there. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we took a look at the cytology, and this is actually diff quick stain because I said, hey, if you want me to look at this before I go, you need to diff quick stain it because um, that's quick. And so we took a quick look, and this is what we see. So this is the aspirate of that presumed anal sac lesion. It was kind of hard to see exactly where it was coming from, but you can, again, we kind of have a lot of clues pointing us in this direction. This sample is super, super cellular, and you can definitely see that there are these large uh, clusters of epithelial cells. They're all hanging on to each other tightly in big cohesive groups. So all these guys are epithelial. And when we look at them closer up, we can see that they all have fairly uniform nuclei, so there's not a ton of criteria of malignancy here, really not much at all. Um, all the cell sizes are about the same, all the nuclear sizes are about the same. Uh, we don't see prominent nucleoli really, um, but these do look like kind of a bunch of nuclei in a sea of blue cytoplasm. And when we see that, where you can't really make out the borders between the cells very well, they just literally look like bare nuclei all over just the cytoplasm um, C, then we call that a neuroendocrine look. And neuroendocrine tumors are things like thyroid tumors, um, some adrenal or adrenal medulla tumors like pheochromocytoma. There's a bunch of different types of, of neuroendocrine tumors. But when you're talking specifically in an anal sac, the type of tumor that looks like that, that has that neuroendocrine type look, is an anal sac adenocarcinoma. That's the characteristic look of anal sac adenocarcinoma. And even though these cells don't show really much criteria of malignancy at all, so we might say, well, maybe they're benign. The thing is, is that there's not a benign version of this type of neoplasm in the anal sac. There's not a benign version of a anal sac adenocarcinoma. There's not like an anal sac adenoma. Um, so we can definitely call this an anal sac adenocarcinoma. One other thing you might notice are these little rosettes. So when the nuclei are, are um, doing a little circle there, that's called a rosette or a pseudoacinar structure is also something that you can call it and that's pretty um, characteristic of, of this particular type of tumor as well. One thing I wanted to just point out in our last 30 seconds is we also got some of these cells and this is a really nice comparison of what perianal gland epithelial cells and anal sac adenocarcinoma which are all of our tumor cells here look like. These are big and puffy cells and we only have so they have a bunch of cytoplasm versus our anal sac adenocarcinoma and neoplastic cells here and these are just normal because we did a percutaneous aspiration of the anal sac in this case so we just picked up a few of these inadvertently.